Okay, so we're going to cover a, an essential skill for your A-level course today, and that is expanding brackets. Now, there are a number of ways to expand brackets, and you will know a few of them already. So one way of doing it is the FOIL method. A second one we call grouping. And the third one is the box method. Now, I'm not going to say that one is better than the others, um, but the box method is definitely the, the, the best one. Um, the foil method is good, it's okay, it is a little bit limited, okay. Um, grouping is pretty good and box method uh, is very good too. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the grouping method and then the box method. Um, so that you get a flavour of these two new ones. What you will find with foil method is that it has its limitations and actually we need to, a slightly better method when we're doing our calculations. So if I start by writing this single bracket, so 2x brackets 3x plus 8y minus 7, what we would do um, to expand this essentially is we would do 2x times by 3x plus 2x times by 8y plus 2x times by minus 7. Now you may not necessarily write it out this way but this is essentially what you're doing in your calculations. So when we work this through we get 6x squared 16xy minus 14 x. And so what we've done essentially is we've grouped these up, the ones in the bracket. So we've taken the 3x, we put it here, the 8y has gone here, and the minus 7 has gone here. So we've grouped it into three groups and then expanded them. So we can also look at a binomial expansion. Now a binomial is this. x plus 5 is a binomial x is a number and 5 is a number, so a binomial is two numbers. x is one number, 5 is the other number. So a double bracket, if I put an x plus 2 here, that's another binomial. Okay, So we have one binomial, two binomials. Uh, I guess a trinomial will be something like x plus y plus z, but we don't really talk about trinomials too much. Okay, so expanding a double bracket or two binomials, um, we can use this grouping method again. You'll take x to start with and you multiply it by the second bracket, x times by x plus 2. The second step, take your second number, which is 5, times that by the second bracket. We expand these single brackets, x squared, 2x, 5x and 10. We then group these two numbers in the middle together because they are x to the power of 1. We can compare them so we get 7x plus 10. So that is an expansion of a double bracket using our grouping method. Okay, right, well, let's have a look at another example 2x minus 1. 3x plus 7. Exactly the same again. 2x multiplied by 3x plus 7. This time, negative 1 times by 3x plus 7. So out of this, we get 6x squared plus 14x. Negative 3x and negative 7. Again, group the 2 in the middle and we have 6x squared plus 11x minus 7 as our answer. Okay, so how about I have a binomial, x plus 2, and I want to multiply this by a trinomial, 2x plus y plus 5. Well, with the grouping method, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to take my first term, which is x, 
x times 2x plus y plus 5 plus my second number 2 times 2x plus y plus 5. And again, let's work this all out. 2x squared plus xy plus 5x plus 4x plus 2y plus 10. Now let's play the game of, well, let's see if we can simplify what we've got. Well, there's only one x squared term. There's only one xy term. The 5x and the 4x I can add together to make 9x. 2y is on its own, plus 10. Okay. Right. Let's give you another type of expansion. So if I have x plus y all squared, often people make a little mistake with this in that they think that this equals x squared plus y squared. And I will warn you, if you ever write that x plus y all squared equals x squared plus y squared, you will have to face the wrath of whichever teacher has had the mispleasure of having you in their class. This is one of the worst mistakes you can make in maths. Um, and there are some memes, I believe the word is made about this expansion going wrong. So please, 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 do not make that mistake. What's better to do is to write it out x plus y, x plus y. Now if you do this, and we use our grouping method, you'll get a much more satisfying and correct solution. Which is x squared plus 2xy or yx plus y squared. Okay, well, what happens when I have um, three um, terms? What if I have x, x plus 2, and let's go for 5x minus 1. What do I do here? Well, it's up to you, really. Um, because we have three terms here, and because the first term is just x, what you could do is tackle these two terms to start with. Now, these two terms are going to become x squared plus 2x. You can put that in a bracket and multiply that bracket by 5x minus 1. Now, if I do this, I have x squared times 5x minus 1 plus 2x, brackets 5x minus 1. In this case, we get 5x cubed minus x squared plus 10x squared minus 2x. Word of kind of warning, or just as a note, if you have an x at the start like this, we know that you're going to have no numerical term at the end. Every term will have x in. Okay, you'll be able to factorise it back out uh, when we do factorising. Not finished here though. 5x cubed minus x squared plus 10x squared is 9x squared minus 2x. Okay, so final one to look at. We're going to put everything together okay, and have a go at a triple. So triple binomial, including some rather exciting looking binomials. 2x plus y, x plus 2, and finally 3x plus 5y. Okay, so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand together two of these and then expand the final one. Okay, so in here I'm going to write 2x brackets x plus 2 plus y, brackets x plus 2. This is going to give me 2x squared plus 4x plus xy plus 2y. And that is times by 3x plus 5y. 
Now, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to sort of flip these over. I'm going to group this by writing 3x brackets 2x squared plus 4x plus xy plus 2y plus 5y 2x squared plus 4x plus xy plus 2y. Oh, getting a tired hand. Okay, so now all we need to do is expand these two. So we have 6x cubed plus 12x squared plus 3x squared y plus uh, 6xy. Next one, I don't know why I've written five there. Uh, 10, x squared y plus 20, whoa, 20, xy plus five xy squared. Finally, 10 y squared. Okay, that's right, let's see if we can group these together a little bit. So do we have any x cubed? No, we've only got one x cubed. You're on your own, son. Any x squareds? Well, we're not going to find any here, are we? So, no. x squared y. Ooh, we've got one here. Okay, so we've got 3x squared y and we've got 10x squared y. So we have 13x squared y. Okay, xy's, we've got 6 and we've got 20. So we have 26 x, y, and that's it for the similarity. So we end up with 5 x, y squared plus 10 y squared. Whoa, that's a tough one. Okay, so that's our grouping method. Okay, and we've had a go at some questions using that grouping method. What I'm going to do now is go back and I'm going to show you basically the same questions um, using the box method. I love it. I love the box method. It's just, it's wonderful. Now, the reason I really like it um, is because you can actually use the box method to factorise as well. But I'll keep stum about that for the moment because we are just expanding for the moment. But keep in the back of your mind that the box method is a two-way method um, and will help you both both ways, okay? So here we go. We started off with x plus five, x plus two, and we use a grouping method for this. Now the box method for this, draw two lines like this, x plus five, x plus two. And all we need to do is almost pretend we've got these four quadrants and multiply into them x times x is x squared, 5 times x is 5x, 2 times x is 2x, 5 times 2 is 10. We can then add these two together and we end up with x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, what if we've got something a little bit more difficult? What if we have 2x minus 1, 3x plus 7? Well, Stick it in a box, 2x minus 1, 3x plus 7. Three times, 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Minus 1 times 3 is 3x is minus 3x. 14x here and minus 7. Again, add these two together. 6x squared plus 11x minus 7. Right, well, let's go for something a little bit more difficult then. What if we have a binomial, x plus 2, and we have a trinomial, 5x plus y plus 5. Sorry if I'm rushing. There is a cake being made next door, and I'm, you know, I like cake. Who doesn't? Right, let's stick it in a box. Here we go. We have x plus 2, 5x plus y. What am I doing? I'm putting an extra one on. There you go, plus 5. So look, here we go. Let's just fill these in. 5x squared, 10x, x and a y, xy, 
2y, 5x, and 10. Then see if anything matches in here. Okay, great. I'm going to put this 10 and this 5 together. Apart from that, nothing. 5x squared plus xy plus 15x plus 2y plus 10. Now, I'm not saying that that's a lot less hassle than the grouping method, but it's a bit neater. And one thing that's good about this, the box method, is you know if I have three here and two here, uh, I'm expecting six results. So if you do the box method, it's impossible to leave a gap and leave one out. Okay? Well, I can tackle some more ones with box method. So if I have a triple, here we go, 2x plus 3 all squared. So remember, this is absolutely not whatever you want to say it is not 2x cubed, sorry, 2x squared plus uh, 3 squared. No, absolutely not. This is 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3, three brackets that are the same. So for this one, what I would do is I would do a single box, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3, 4x squared, 6x, 6x, and 9, which is 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Then I'll draw a second box. Why can't I draw a straight line? With 2x plus 3 here, and the result of this first box here. So 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Here we go then. 8x cubed, 12x squared, 24x squared, 36x, 18x, 27. So 36x squared here. Why can't I count? What's wrong with me? 54x. Ignore that, I was fine. I just had a bit of a meltdown. I'm okay. Uh, plus 27. Okay, done. Right, so there was that really tricky question we looked at on the first uh, using grouping method. Let's try that with box method. Okay, so that question was 2x plus y, x plus 2, 3x plus 5y. Okay, let's pick two, these two, you've been chosen, and expand these two in a box together. 2x plus y, x plus 2, 2x squared, xy, 4x, 2y. Okay. We put the result of this box up here. 2x squared. Can we simplify any of it? No, we can't, can we? So we're going to end up with eight terms. xy, 4x, I need some more space, uh, and 2y. Okay, so four terms on the top. We take this last binomial and we put it down here. 2x squared, 2x squared times 3x is 6x cubed. 10x squared y, 3x squared y, uh, 5xy squared, 12x squared, 20xy, 6xy, and 10y squared. Now it's all in this box and we can kind of read it across and the thing that's nice is we can pair stuff up. These two pair up, great. Then these two pair up, lovely. Take it out of the box, 6x cubed, 13x squared y. These are going to write on their own, so let's go for uh, 12x squared, 5x y squared, add these two together, 26 xy, and finally 10 y squared. Cool, okay. 
the final thing for you to get your head around is the difference of two squares. Um, and you would have seen this before, but it is something you need to keep in your mind all the time with algebraic manipulation. X plus two, X minus two. When I expand these together, we have a first term of X squared, we have a positive two X, a negative two X and a minus four. This simplifies to x squared minus 4. And hopefully, by knowing this, you can very, very quickly be able to expand brackets like this. Let's do one more, just because I'm showing off. So you can even do this, can't you? Well, think about it in exactly the same way. The first term is squared. The second, the middle terms go. So the last term must be minus y squared. So be really, really careful with the difference of two squares. Make sure you recognize it and don't make mistakes. You can just use your box method or your grouping method It'd be absolutely fine, but always watch out for the difference of two squares. For example, in some questions, you may be asked to factorise something like x squared minus 16. Okay, it's important that you know it's going to end up with something like this. Okay, so I've shown you a couple of methods. Um, we have our grouping method, we have our box method. And if you are still wanting to use it, you can use your foil. But I think what you'll find is this is going to sort of phase out. It's going to very slowly just disappear. Like that scene in Avengers or wherever it was when they all melted. Never actually seen it. Someone told me about it. Anyway, um, you can practice this. Um, it is chapter one. It is going to be exercise 1B from your textbook. Lovely stuff. Have a go at both methods, see which one you prefer. Okay, bye.